Henry Purcell, Henry Purcell, or, September 1659, November 21, 1695, was an English composer. Although incorporating Italian and French stylistic elements into his compositions, Purcell's legacy was a uniquely English form of Baroque music. He is generally considered to be one of the greatest English composers, no later native-born English composer approached his fame until Edward Elgar, Ralph von Williams, William Walton and Benjamin Britten in the 20th century. Purcell was born in St. Anne's Lane, Old Pie Street, Westminster, the area of London later known as Devil's Acre, in 1659. Henry Purcell Sr., whose older brother, Thomas Purcell, died 1682, was a musician, was a gentleman of the Chapel Royal and sang at the coronation of King Charles II of England. Henry the Elder had three sons, Edward, Henry, and Daniel. Daniel Purcell, the youngest of the brothers, was also a prolific composer who wrote the music for much of the final act of the Indian Queen after Henry Purcell's death. Henry Purcell's family lived just a few hundred yards west off Westminster Abbey from 1659 onwards. After his father's death in 1664, Purcell was placed under the guardianship of his uncle Thomas, who showed him great affection and kindness. Thomas was himself a gentleman of His Majesty's Chapel, and arranged for Henry to be admitted as a chorister. Henry studied first under Captain Henry Cook, Master of the Children, and afterwards under Pelham Humphrey, Cook's successor. The composer Matthew Locke was a family friend and, particularly with his semi operas, probably also had a musical influence on the young Purcell. Henry was a chorister in the Chapel Royal until his voice broke in 1673, when he became assistant to the organ builder John Hingston, who held the post of keeper of wind instruments to the king. Purcell is said to have been composing at nine years old, but the earliest work that can be certainly identified as his is an ode for the king's birthday, written in 1670. The dates for his compositions are often uncertain, despite considerable research, it is assumed that the three-part song Sweet Tyrannus, I Now Resign was written by him as a child. After Humphrey's death, Purcell continued his studies under Dr. John Blow. He attended Westminster School and in 1676 was appointed copyist at Westminster Abbey. Henry Purcell's earliest anthem Lord, who can tell was composed in 1678. It is a psalm that is prescribed for Christmas Day and also to be read at morning prayer on the fourth day of the month. In 1679, he wrote songs for John Playford's choice airs, songs and dialogues and an anthem, the name of which is unknown, for the chapel royal. From an extant letter written by Thomas Purcell we learn that this anthem was composed for the exceptionally fine voice of the Rev. John Gosling, then at Canterbury, but afterwards a gentleman of His Majesty's Chapel. Purcell wrote several anthems at different times for Gosling's extraordinary basso profonda voice, which is known to have had a range of at least two full octaves, from D below the bass staff to the D above it. The dates of very few of these sacred compositions are known, perhaps the most notable example is the anthem They That Go Down to the Sea in Ships. In gratitude for the providential escape of King Charles II from shipwreck, Gosling, who had been of the royal party, put together some verses from the psalms in the form of an anthem and requested Purcell to set them to music. The challenging work opens with a passage which traverses the full extent of Gosling's range, beginning on the upper D and descending two octaves to the lower. In 1679, Blow, who had been appointed organist of Westminster Abbey ten years before, resigned his office in favor of Purcell. Purcell now devoted himself almost entirely to the composition of sacred music, and for six years severed his connection with the theater. However, during the early part of the year, probably before taking up his new office, he had produced two important works for the stage, the music for Nathaniel Lee's Theodosius, and Thomas Durfee's Virtuous Wife. Between 1680 and 1688 Purcell wrote music for seven plays. The composition of his chamber opera Dido and Aeneas, which forms a very important landmark in the history of English dramatic music, has been attributed to this period, and its earliest production may well have predated the documented one of 1689. It was written to a libretto furnished by Nahum Tate, and performed in 1689 in cooperation with Josias Priest a dancing master and the choreographer for the Dorset Garden Theatre. Priest's wife kept a boarding school for young gentlewomen, first in Leicester Fields and afterwards at Chelsea, where the opera was performed. It is occasionally considered the first genuine English opera, though that title is usually given to Blow's Venus and Adonis, as in Blow's work, the action does not progress in spoken dialogue but in Italian-style recitative. Each work runs to less than one hour. 
At the time, Dido and Aeneas never found its way to the theater, though it appears to have been very popular in private circles. It is believed to have been extensively copied, but only one song was printed by Purcell's widow and Orpheus Britannicus, and the complete work remained in manuscript until 1840, when it was printed by the Musical Antiquarian Society under the editorship of Sir George McFerrin. The composition of Dido and Aeneas gave Purcell his first chance to write a sustained musical setting of a dramatic text. It was his only opportunity to compose a work in which the music carried the entire drama. The story of Dido and Aeneas derives from the original source in Virgil's epic The Aeneid. Soon after Purcell's marriage, in 1682, on the death of Edward Lowe, he was appointed organist of the Chapel Royal, an office which he was able to hold simultaneously with his position at Westminster Abbey. His eldest son was born in this same year, but he was short-lived. His first printed composition, Twelve Sonatas, was published in 1683. For some years after this, he was busy in the production of sacred music, odes addressed to the king and royal family, and other similar works. In 1685, he wrote two of his finest anthems, I was glad and my heart is inditing, for the coronation of King James II. In 1690 he composed a setting of the birthday ode for Queen Mary. Arise, my muse and four years later wrote one of his most elaborate, important and magnificent works, a setting for another birthday ode for the Queen, written by Nahum Tate, entitled Come Ye Sons of Art. In 1687, he resumed his connection with the theater by furnishing the music for John Dryden's tragedy Tyrannic Love. In this year, Purcell also composed a march and pas pied called Quickstep, which became so popular that Lord Wharton adapted the latter to the fatal verses of Lilla Blaro and in or before January 1688, Purcell composed his anthem Blessed Are They That Fear the Lord by express command of the king. A few months later, he wrote the music for Durfee's play, The Fool's Preferment. In 1690, he composed the music for Betterton's adaptation of Fletcher on Massinger's Prophetess, afterwards called Diocletian, and Dryden's Amphitryon. In 1691, he wrote the music for what is sometimes considered as dramatic masterpiece, King Arthur, or the British Worthy. In 1692, he composed The Fairy Queen, an adaptation of Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream, the score of which, his longest for theater, was rediscovered in 1901 and published by the Purcell Society. The Indian Queen followed in 1695, in which year he also wrote songs for Dryden and Davenant's version of Shakespeare's The Tempest. Recently, this has been disputed by music scholars, probably including Full Fathom Five and Come Unto These Yellow Sands. The Indian Queen was adapted from a tragedy by Dryden and Sir Robert Howard. In these semi-operas, another term for which at the time was dramatic opera, the main characters of the plays do not sing but speak their lines, the action moves in dialogue rather than recitative. The related songs are sung for them by singers, who have minor dramatic roles. Purcell's Te Deum and Jubilatio were written for St. Cecilia's Day, 1694. The first English Te Deum ever composed with orchestral accompaniment. This work was annually performed at St. Paul's Cathedral until 1712, after which it was performed alternately with Handel's Utrecht Te Deum and Jubilate until 1743, when both works were replaced by Handel's Stedding and Te Deum. He composed an anthem and two elegies for Queen Mary II's funeral, his funeral sentences, and music for the funeral of Queen Mary. Besides the operas and semi operas already mentioned, Purcell wrote the music and songs for Thomas Durfee's The Comical History of Don Quixote, Bonduca, The Indian Queen and others, a vast quantity of sacred music, and numerous odes, cantatas, and other miscellaneous pieces. The quantity of his instrumental chamber music is minimal after his early career, and his keyboard music consists of an even more minimal number of harpsichord suites and organ pieces. In 1693, Purcell composed music for two comedies, The Old Bachelor, and The Double Dealer. Purcell also composed for five other plays within the same year. In July 1695, Purcell composed an ode for the Duke of Gloucester for his sixth birthday. The ode is titled Who Can From Joy Refrain? Purcell's four part sonatas were issued in 1697. In the final six years of his life, Purcell wrote music for 40 tu plays. Purcell died in 1695 at his home in Marsham Street, at the height of his career. He is believed to have been 35 or 36 years old at the time. The cause of his death is unclear. One theory is that he caught a chill after returning home late from the theater one night to find that his wife had locked him out. Another is that he succumbed to tuberculosis. The beginning of Purcell's will reads Purcell is buried adjacent to the organ in Westminster Abbey. 
The music that he had earlier composed for Queen Mary's funeral was performed during his funeral as well. Purcell was universally mourned as a very great master of music. Following his death, the officials at Westminster honored him by unanimously voting that he be buried with no expense in the north aisle of the abbey. His epitaph reads, Here lies Henry Purcell Esquire, who left this life and is gone to that blessed place where only his harmony can be exceeded. Purcell fathered six children by his wife Frances, four of whom died in infancy. His wife, as well as his son Edward, 1689-1740, and daughter Frances, survived him. Francis the Elder died in 1706, having published a number of her husband's works, including the now famous collection called Dorpheus Britannicus, in two volumes, printed in 1698 and 1702, respectively. Edward was appointed organist of St. Clement's, East Cheap, London, in 1711 and was succeeded by his son Edward Henry Purcell, died 1765. Both men were buried in St. Clement's near the organ gallery. Purcell worked in many genres, both in works closely linked to the court, such as symphony song, to the chapel royal, such as the symphony anthem, and the theater. Among Purcell's most notable works are his opera Dido and Aeneas, 1688, his semi-operas Diocletian, 1690, King Arthur, 1691, The Fairy Queen, 1692, and Timon of Athens, 1695 as well as the compositions Hail. Bright Cecilia, 1692, Come Ye Sons of Art, 1694, and Funeral Sentences and Music for the Funeral of Queen Mary, 1695. After his death, Purcell was honored by many of his contemporaries, including his old friend John Blow, who wrote an ode, on the death of Mr. Henry Purcell, Mark How the Lark and Linnet Sing, with text by his old collaborator, John Dryden. William Croft's 1724 setting for the burial service, was written in the style of the great master. Croft preserved Purcell's setting of Thou Knowest Lord, Z58, in his service, for reasons obvious to any artist, it has been sung at every British state funeral ever since. More recently, the English poet Gerard Manley Hopkins wrote a famous sonnet entitled simply Henry Purcell, with a headnote reading, The poet wishes well to the divine genius of Purcell and praises him that, Whereas other musicians have given utterance to the moods of man's mind, he has, beyond that, uttered in notes the very make and species of man as created both in him and in all men generally. Purcell also had a strong influence on the composers of the English musical renaissance of the early 20th century, most notably Benjamin Britten, who created and performed a realization of Dido and Aeneas and whose The Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra is based on a theme from Purcell's Abdelazer. Stylistically, the aria I know a bank from Britain's opera A Midsummer Night's Dream is clearly inspired by Purcell's aria Sweeter Than Roses, which Purcell originally wrote as part of incidental music to Richard Norton's Pausanias, the betrayer of his country. Purcell is honored together with Johann Sebastian Bach and George Friedrich Handel with a feast day on the liturgical calendar of the Episcopal Church, USA on 28th of July. In a 1940 interview Ignaz Friedman stated that he considered Purcell as great as Bach and Beethoven. In Victoria Street, Westminster, England, there is a bronze monument to Purcell, sculpted by Glyn Williams and erected in 1994. Purcell's works had been catalogued by Franklin Zimmerman, who gave them a number preceded by Z. A Purcell club was founded in London in 1836 for promoting the performance of his music, but was dissolved in 1863. In 1876, a Purcell Society was founded, which published new editions of his works. A modern-day Purcell Club has been created, and provides guided tours and concerts in support of Westminster Abbey. So strong was his reputation that a popular wedding processional was incorrectly attributed to Purcell for many years. The so-called Purcell's Trumpet Voluntary was in fact written around 1700 by a British composer named Jeremiah Clark as the Prince of Denmark's March. Music for the Funeral of Queen Mary was reworked by Wendy Carlos for the title music of the 1971 film by Stanley Kubrick, A Clockwork Orange. The 1973 Rolling Stone review of Jethro Tull's A Passion Play compared the musical style of the album with that of Purcell. In 2009 Pete Townsend of The Who, an English rock band that established itself in the 1960s, identified Purcell's harmonies particularly the use of suspension and resolution that Townsend had learned from producer Kit Lambert, as an influence on the band's music, in songs such as Won't Get Fooled Again, 1971, 
I Can See for Miles, 1967, and the very Perchelli in the intro to Pinball Wizard. Purcell's music was widely featured as background music in the Academy Award-winning 1979 film Kramer vs. Kramer with the soundtrack being released at BCBS Masterworks Records. In the 21st century, the soundtrack of the 2005 film version of Pride and Prejudice features a dance titled A Postcard to Henry Purcell. This is a version by composer Dario Marianelli of Purcell's Abdelazur theme. In the German-language 2004 movie, Downfall. The music of Dido's Lament is used repeatedly as the end of the third Reich culminates. The 2012 film Moonrise Kingdom contains Benjamin Britten's version of the Rondo and Purcell's Abdelazur created for his 1946 The Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra. In 2013, the Pet Shop Boys released their single Love is a Bourgeois Construct incorporating one of the same ground basses from King Arthur used by Nyman in his Draftsman's Contract score. Olivia Cheney performs her adaptation of There's Not a Swain on her CD The Longest River. Bibliography. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.